Good morning. Yesterday, I, well, first of all, I got like 12 hours of sleep last night. Not even a joke. Well, I was in bed from like eight o'clock to seven o'clock this morning. So we hosted Brian's family for an early Thanksgiving. Just with the virus and everything, we're kind of like splitting up like whose families we're gonna see when, just so that we're not like taking everything to everyone. I don't know. We're just trying to think of the safest way to do this. So we did an early Thanksgiving and we hosted it for Brian's family yesterday. And that was my first time to ever host a Thanksgiving. I just have so much respect for parents who have done this for years and years. Like I completely understand why my mom doesn't like to have humongous family Thanksgivings anymore because we used to host my entire dad's side of the family, which was like 40 people over at our house every Thanksgiving. And I can, I was exhausted and there were four of us. So I cannot imagine hosting for 40 people. Last night after everything was said and done, I ended up getting a bath for the first time, like since my surgery, which was great and just relaxed. I like sped through a lot of my book and it was so nice. Anyway, we ended up cooking. <laughs> we had chicken instead of turkey because full disclosure, we bought a turkey and then had a mental breakdown about it because we've never cooked a full turkey. I'm about to set this phone down. Neither Brian nor I had cooked a real turkey before. And so we started like watching YouTube videos when we got home. We didn't buy additional like seasonings and onions and all of these different things that you would probably want to cook like with the turkey to actually make it have flavor. And basically we freaked out. We returned the turkey. They happily took it back, which was really nice. And then we ended up just getting some chicken. So it was pre-marinated and it was great. I did end up cooking the, a Brussels sprout casserole from the Define Dish. And I also made her sausage balls, the Define Dish sausage balls as an appetizer. And I made a spice cake from Sally's Baking Addiction, which I had never cooked anything from her before. And it was good. I just definitely overcooked it. It's okay. Brian seems to love it. And it, we made some homemade like cream cheese frosting, which he's just over the moon about. It was just a lot of prep. I was kind of stressed out about it, unnecessarily so, I would say, but once we figured out the chicken and turkey swap, I, I was feeling a lot better. Nash, what you got? Is that dad's shoe? Are you supposed to have that? The thing is, Nash doesn't ever tear up anything. He doesn't eat shoes, he doesn't tear up shoes. He simply does this to show you that he has it and he'll do a little drive-by. So he'll just like walk by an open door and show you he has the shoe and it's just an invitation to play in general. It's very cute, but it's very bad. We have to fluff this cushion all the time because he just loves to lay on it, but it's not really an issue. And this couch is awesome. I know I've talked about this a million different times and a lot of you have asked me what our exact couch is. Besides the fact that you can customize the length and the size of this thing, let me back up just for scale in case you haven't seen it. When we first moved in, Brian already owned this chase piece and then this two seater right here. So those were wedged together and he basically had like a three seater couch. We bought this specific couch because you can add on to it. So all we had to do is purchase this little corner connector piece and then this two seater here, but they also have it available where you can buy a three seater here, or you don't have to have this type of chase. There's one without an arm. Like they have all these different customizations. Another thing that we love about it, while it looks kind of messy because it is this kind of like, microfiber situation. It's actually the easiest thing to clean. Nash has gotten sick on this. He got sick in this corner yesterday and you wouldn't even know it. Folex is our best friend. They told us that it was pet and kid friendly and they did not lie. So we're really happy they kept their promise and oh, that squishy cushion. Just a little follow up to the last DIY and last vlog. We finally picked out these knobs to go on them. And I wanna show you from the side because I really love the little detail that they have right here. And we ended up getting these at Home Depot. And they're not like the most heavyweight knobs ever, but they do have some weight to them. So it doesn't feel like super cheap and plasticky. The whole setup is coming together. Brian did a little bit of cord management, but we still have a ways to go. I need to get a chair still. But I am about to quickly get ready because today I do want to film plus I'm just going to be in this vlog all day so I feel like I would just want to look a little bit more put together 
But I also wanted to show you that I've been watching Dash and Lily. This was a recommendation from my friend who actually lives in New York. This show actually takes place in New York at Christmas time, and it's oddly familiar to this book that I'm reading right now. Like, they're not that similar, but I'm reading The Authenticity Project, which is basically about this notebook that gets passed around to these different people, and their relationship starts off with a notebook. So it's kind of interesting, but it's very good. It's kind of odd. Like this Hanukkah episode was very bizarre in this like club scene. Pretty good. Pretty cute show if you want something that's kind of new for Christmas this year. All right, so I just finished getting ready. I put all of our sheets and everything in the washing machine. So I'm doing that. And then I'm also going to sit down and try to spend a couple hours editing this next video and have that out early this week. And then this vlog will be out later in the week. All right, so anyway, I'm off to edit. So I'm going to work on this for a couple of hours and then check back in. took a quick little editing break to eat some lunch and I realized this doesn't look the most appetizing, but it is really good. And this is a little pasta dish from the plant-based RD account, that same one that we were going to cook the garlicky chickpeas from and then never got around to it. But this is really good. It has like a tahini, tomato, um, what else was in it? Like maple syrup, smoked paprika, lemon kind of sauce. It's very different, super nutty. But really really good and I just topped ours with a little bit of Parmesan cheese because the recipe called for nutritional yeast and we haven't bit the bullet and bought that yet which is basically kind of just like a natural cheese like flavor if you will it also said to top with lemon so I did that and that's what was in this dish which now needs to go in the sink but anyway I just had to tell you about this little pasta dish because it is awesome I'll link the recipe in the description box okay I am in the process of finally ordering our Christmas stockings I've been looking for these for a really long time this year and we're gonna go with these really simple little quilted white ones that we can get monogrammed I have a friend that does a lot of monogramming so we want her to do it just to make them a little bit more special and these stockings I'm getting four of them they were gonna cost us $72 because they're on sale um, for $18 a piece well then they had this code that if you spent $79 then you could get free shipping without the free shipping I was gonna pay an additional $14 so then I just went and I found some like random thing that didn't cost very much. I ended up getting this 2020 ornament because we have a ton of big life events we need to commemorate. So I was like, why not just get this for 10 bucks? So it's actually saving me $4 to buy something else because they wouldn't give me free shipping until I spent $79. How stupid is that? I just don't understand why companies do this. I mean, I guess I'm giving them more money and not the shipping company, but so dumb. Also, don't ever buy anything full price ever. Then there's always a coupon available somewhere, but I, I just edited for like two hours, maybe three hours. I don't know. I wasn't making attention to the clock and I made it through the whole rough cut, which is basically me just going through all of the footage and cutting out all of the like times where I don't say anything and some of the ums and ands and just like weird filler words. So I just got through that part and now I'm going to call it a day because it's a super long video and that just took me a really long time. So I need to get up and do something different. So I also need to create the Sunday summary. So I think I'm going to get on and do that. My goals for today, I think that I want to make that wreath. I've decided I was going to do like a Christmas DIY video, but I think truly I don't have that many projects planned and we are not trying to buy like every single Christmas decoration this year. We're just going to kind of like see how things evolve and just get the basics, like I just ordered those Christmas stockings that I showed you. So anyway, I don't think I'm going to do a whole Christmas DIY video. But instead, today, I think I may make that wreath with y'all, so you still get to see a DIY, it's just not separate. You coming to help? Thanks, buddy. All right, I'm finally getting around to doing this little Christmas DIY project, and I'm very excited. I'm going to watch Dash and Lily while I do it, just because I think that would be fun and Christmassy. And so the goal is to take this rather plain wreath. We used to have these all over our house growing up, like on every window. So when I moved out, my parents gave me one. And I think I may eventually end up replacing this bow with a gold, just so that it will match all of the ornaments. But for now, I don't have that ribbon. Uh, so we're just going to go with the red one as it is. But then I also bought some battery operated lights because just with the way that our door is shaped, I think we're going to have a lighted wreath instead of like lighted garland or something around the door. So now this will still kind of stand out and also holy moly. 
the duvet cover is making all sorts of noise in the, the dryer right now. So the goal will be to use just little bits of this picture hanging wire. You could also use twist ties or anything of the like, maybe even some like pipe cleaners or something. And I'm going to thread it on to these little loops so that it'll be connected to the wreath. And I may even end up buying some additional little sprigs of like a different type of branch or something so that it kind of adds dimension and makes it a little bit more full. All right, this is working pretty well, actually. This is really on there tight, which is the goal, just in case it's windy or anything. So I pretty much just cut a tiny, maybe two inch piece of this wire, looped it through the top of these ornaments right here, and then I just wrapped it around several times. You can't even really see it, which is also great, just to make sure that it was on here really tightly. So I'm gonna kind of alternate all of these different types of ornaments throughout. And I don't know, I kind of feel like the more the merrier, huh? Hmm? ish with this project i got all of the lights and everything wrapped around and then realized that we didn't have any double a batteries so we're gonna have to get some of those before i can light this up and then figure out if i need to redo anything or add any christmas balls where it looks a little sparse or something and we had a lot left over so i just went ahead and hung all of these little extra ornaments on the tree and then i'll pull these ribbons out eventually and again maybe even replace this with a gold bow and that's it Brian just finished the Peloton. I just edited for another, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour or so. So no, I'm gonna get some water, grab my towel, get a quick little 30 minute workout in. And then I think I'm gonna make an early-ish dinner. It's five o'clock right now. So I think it'll be a normal dinner time by the time that I like do the bike and shower and all that stuff. So let's go because I'm starving and this is gonna be my reward for exercising. Putting on these shoes every time reminds me, I really love these shoes. Just. I'm gonna need to preface this with that. These are the Pearl Izumi, and I love the style. These were the first spin shoes that I ever got, and I've always had like these Shimano clips on them. But the thing is, these are compatible. They're just so hard to get in and out of on these pedals. And a ton of pedals are dual-sided, so you can fit this type of cleat, which is known as a delta cleat, because it's shaped like a triangle. Those can fit in here, and then typically on the other side, they have cleats that fit what's called SPD. So it's basically these two little bolts that sit on this side. I own a different pair that are more like tennis shoe-like, like you can walk really easily in them. They're from the brand called Tium, and they don't work with this pedal currently. So I just did a lot of research trying to figure out if we can replace these pedals with a dual sided pedal just so it'll give us the option and we can like have our shoes last a little bit longer but also the spd clips in general regardless of what bike you're on they're so much easier to clip in and out of in my opinion if you've had any luck changing your peloton pedals out let me know. I found some on Amazon and I even went to the Peloton site and looked to see if they had recommendations for replacements. And they did recommend one, but they were like $170 or something. They weren't from Peloton. They were from some other brand, but they also have like the foot cages where you can actually just use your little tennis shoe feet on the bike. 
and I didn't want that. So then I was looking for some other ones and they're kind of expensive. They're all like 160 to $170 and most of the reviews are great. But then several of them scared me because it basically like stripped the screw portion inside the pedal on the Peloton. And I don't wanna ruin this piece of equipment. So if you've had luck with it, let me know what brand that you got. But that's something that I'm thinking about doing is just switching the pedals out to be dual Delta and SPD. No, look at this cute man. He says, I don't like it when mom rides the bike. Cause I like to stick my nosy on the wheel and then she makes me leave. Are you gonna lay there and be a goody boy? Somebody's pooped. Brian took Nash on a walk while I was riding the Peloton and look what I've picked off of him. He is just a little piece of Velcro that picks up everything on his walks. It was all clean, but we still have to put clean sheets on. <sighs> Life with a puppy is very messy, but very cute. Dinner tonight is one of our absolute favorites. We, I'm sad to say this, but make this probably once a week. There's not a whole lot of nutritional value in this meal, but it is so good and so easy, especially if you're in a pinch. And this is the Cacio y Pepe, but it's Israeli couscous instead of using noodles. And it's super easy. At our Whole Foods, which is the only place where we can actually find Israeli couscous, also known as pearled couscous, mostly just because it's bigger. Like these round shapes are not like teeny tiny like riced. These are just a little bit bigger. So that's a big distinction. You probably could make it with the other. It's all made with the same thing. It would just be a little bit different texture. And legitimately, the only ingredients are the couscous water, which everybody has, um, salt and pepper, which you likely already have at home, and then some freshly grated Pecorino Romano. She also says Parmesan is fine. We never top ours with parsley, mostly because we don't have it on hand. And even when we do, I don't love the taste of parsley. It all cooks in one pot. It is so easy. I'll show you. Okay, this is the only type of pearled couscous that they have at our local grocery stores. These little packets are just a little bit wasteful in my opinion, especially for how often we cook this dish because they do come with a garlic and olive oil kind of seasoning packet that we always just end up ditching mostly because we always make the same dish with it and we just never need that seasoning. But I thought I was being super smart the other day and I came home really excited because I found the pearled couscous in bulk and turns out it was actually turmeric flavored. <laughs> so we're gonna have to figure out another dish to use that with. you get this boiling you just turn it down to a simmer and you can see that the water starting to soak up this is the texture of noodles so you know this is done when it kind of tastes a little bit al dente like a noodle so now we're just waiting for that it typically takes like 15 or so minutes for this to fully soak in and oftentimes i still have to drain it next you add one teaspoon of salt okay, that's probably about a third of a cup of the cheese and then you can see i added the black pepper and then all you do from here is just mix the whole thing up and the cheese will kind of melt into the pasta like little couscous and it'll take on this really salty, delicious kind of Parmesan-y flavor. And that is all there is to it. I was starving post Peloton, so I just went ahead and heated up some of this Brussels sprout casserole from yesterday, which is good because we've got to eat all of our leftovers. Now we're attempting to start season two of The Mandalorian, and neither of us remember anything about season one. So here we go. Papa, are you rest on dad's shoulder? That's so sweet. So sweet. Nash was being a little crazy, so we had to calm him down. And in the meantime, we've decided to make dessert. Making my favorite dessert, which I mentioned in Vlogmas last year. And I know I, I did a terrible job at Vlogmas. I had like three days worth. So if you didn't watch, I honestly don't blame you. But I just like to pour chocolate chips into a dish, which is easier when I can control the amount. And then I just heat this for 30 seconds and eat it with a spoon. And it is decadent and delicious. I just love it. And we haven't had chocolate chips in ages and I'm so happy to have it back. Well, I eat my melted chocolate chips. Brian's opted for the spice cake that I made for our Thanksgiving yesterday. And it was good. I just definitely cooked it too long. This was from Sally's Baking Addiction. And I did make some modifications, primarily just to the icing because she wanted me to put three cups of powdered sugar in this frosting. I was not about that. So I went with two cups and I still thought that was kind of a lot. And Brian really liked how the icing turned out. So whatever I did was fine, but 
It did suggest that I bake this for 45 to 50 minutes. And I'll say, depending on your oven, and she warned us of this in the recipe, like check on it. I unfortunately got caught up in Dash and Lily and did not check on it and just put it on for 45 minutes. And it is on the drier side. And the name of this is a super moist spice cake. So I did not achieve that, but it is pretty good still. Brian's going on round four. Mm, it's a marginally <laughs> moist spice cake. <laughs> And I said, how come puppies don't have dessert? He do. It's called duck and salmon. <laughs> Clearly, he's not a big eater. This is usually how his bowl looks at night after we've served him dinner. He eats like the top layer and that's pretty much it. And also, Brian just described this cake as arid. So, there's also that. And I said, I still want some. I still want it. So the Mandalorian, we ended up kind of like putting together the pieces on the first season. It's been forever since we watched it, probably since like last winter, I guess, when it came out. And the second season is good so far. It's just really weird. Like we were cracking up at the frog lady. And if you've seen this season, it's episode two. And some of the characters are just so bizarre. And also they kind of like, part of it reminded us a little bit of Harry Potter. And we're like, hasn't this already been done but on the whole we really like it we just love star wars in our family and so just being immersed in that kind of world is fun regardless of what it is but now she got super tired he's here with me now trying to eat my retainer no you can't have that oh that's sweet so anyway, Nash and I are turning in and I'm about to read my book. Again, I only have a couple days left on that loan. Long story short, I do totally acknowledge that I can like turn off the Wi-Fi on my Kindle or turn it to airplane mode. And then my loans won't expire. Got that much. However, I'm waiting on another book to be available and I don't want to miss it. So I don't want to have the complications of like turning it off and turning it back on and then losing it, whatever. So I'm going to try to read a lot tonight. And that's pretty much it. I know it was kind of a boring day at the McMichael house, but we really, really enjoyed how lazy the Sunday was. I mean, we just needed it. And I was looking in the mirror and found this like very obvious gray hair in the front of my hair. So I told you this past week was stressful. So anyway, here's to hoping this next week will be better. It's a short week. I'm taking vacation Thursday through Monday and then we kind of back into Thanksgiving. And so I'm really pumped about that. <laughs> Have a little break from work and stuff too. So anyway. If you like this video, then like it. We have some other vlogs where this came from, and I'll be sure to link them in the description box below. And stick around, subscribe, join the community, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.